Hey guys, what's up? It's the Electrical Code Coach, and today we're going to take a look at the top 10 changes to the 2020 National Electrical Code Book that will blow your mind. There are so many huge jumps, more than I've ever seen in a code cycle, jumping from the 17 to the 2020. And if you're jumping from the 11 or the 14, it is going to be huge. So stick around today. First, before we get started, I would like to thank Williams Electric Supply for donating the code book so we could make this series. You can give them a call at 423-926-1119 or visit them at 2824 West Market Street, Johnson City, Tennessee. You can also visit them in Greenville, Kingsport, and Bristol. Check out Williams Electric Supply for all your electrical needs. So with no more introductions, let's go ahead and jump right in to the top 10 changes that will blow your mind. Number 10, GFCI protection for dryers in dwelling units. 210.8a has made some giant changes. Now you're required to ground fault protect any receptacle that is 125 volts through 250 volts and any single phase branch circuit that is 150 volts to ground or less. So that's talking either one of the phases. If it's 150 volts to ground or less, and we have to make the distinction, it is a receptacle able to uh, take, um, you know, you're able to plug a cord cap into it. So this is going to require, because laundry rooms and similar areas are required to be um, GFCI protected, this is now going to require the dryer to be GFCI protected. So we're going to have to GFCI protect dryers from 2020 and on. Number 10. Number 9. GFCI protection for outdoor HVAC equipment. This also includes all outdoor outlets of dwelling units, 210.8F. So they have expanded GFCI protection to not only receptacles that are outdoors, but all outlets. It does have some exceptions, including some lighting. All of these code tips, you need to go back and read all the different nuances and things. These are just some major things that we're pointing out today. The code states that um, outlets, which includes any type of outlet that is 150 volts to ground or less, 50 amps or less on dwelling units are going to be required to be GFCI protected. This is going to include your standard outdoor HVAC equipment. So this is going to be lit typically 30 amps, you know, maybe maybe more. It's going to require it to be GFCI protected. I believe there was someone who had died. Probably many people have died because of a faulting piece of HVAC equipment. I remember, guys, when as we're doing all these codes, and some of you may you may agree with, and some of you may not. Someone has usually died for it to become an electrical code. So as we're doing these things, and it is nobody would want anyone to die, and oftentimes it's children playing around dryers or playing around HVAC equipment. So no matter how we feel about these things, unfortunately, someone has died in the process of making these codes. Typically, so this is outdoor GFCI protection for HVAC equipment. Number nine. All right, number eight will definitely blow your mind. Surge protection is required now on the service of every new home install, including service change upgrades. This is going to require you to install type one or type two surge protective devices. Now, there are some exceptions in different uh, places uh, in different ways that you can achieve this, um, but it's going to require um, that you do whole home surge protection on the every new home service and every service change. Number eight. Number seven, exterior emergency disconnects required for dwelling units, 230.85. This is going to require, if you do a panel change or a service change, that you are now required to install a um, disconnect switch outside. There are many different ways that you can achieve this, but it's going to require an emergency switch outside on the exterior of the building. So while you're doing that outdoor change, you're also going to be required to do uh, step eight that we just learned about, number eight, and that is going to be install a surge protective device. So there are no more simple panel changes. There's no more inside only. You're also going to have to update the outside and install an emergency switch. Number seven. Number six. Now you're going to be required to do a standalone jumper for bonding metal boxes. So normally we would pull the circuits in. We would leave one of the grounds long. We would put the green screw in the back or other, you know, other bonding device, and we would screw that in and leave it long enough to attach and carry on and do other things. Well, now you are required by 250.148C to have a standalone, meaning one that is not used for any other purpose. They tried to catch this in the 2017 
NEC, but the way they worded it just did not come across correctly, but they corrected it in the 2020, and it states clearly that you are you must do a um, jumper that is bonding the box, and that wire must be used for no other purpose. So you have to have its own wire. You can buy those green ground screws that have the pigtails already on them, or you can use a green ground screw and make its own jumper, but you no longer can use one of the circuit's conductors, wrap it around, and then terminate to the device. So this is number six. Number five, table 310.15B16. Our primary opacity table is now renamed 310.16. But if you've ever been in any other previous code cycle, you know that that is the name that it used to have. And what's so hilarious, if you have a copy of your 2017 code book and you go up and read the table 310.15B16, it says the table formerly known as 310.16. Why they ever changed it, we have no idea. And it's almost become hilarious because if some of you older listeners may know the artist that was formerly known as Prince, this became the table that was formerly known as 310.16. But now it's back the way that it should be and all things are right and well. Number five. Number four, and this one is definitely going to blow your mind. Equipment grounds can count as more than one when calculating box fill. Whew. As if it's not already complicated enough, we all know if you've done any type of box fill calculations in the past that you only count the equipment grounds one time. No matter how many equipment grounds there are, it's only going to count as one volume based off the largest conductor that's in the box, the largest equipment conductor that's in the box. Well, now they've had to change the game on us. What it states now is every conductor past four is going to count at a quarter of a volume. So the first four count as one. But everyone past four is going to count as a quarter of a volume of that conductor. So if it is number 12, you're going to have to divide the, the cubic inch volume for one number 12, divide that by four. And for everyone past that, it's going to count as that quarter, 0.25. I don't know why they did it this way, and we may never know. And may, it may change by the time we get to the 2023, but if you're testing in the 2020, and I will make you some content as we update the 2020 content, we didn't get too far into the math today, but there you go, number four. Number three is sure to blow your mind. All ceiling boxes and habitable rooms of dwelling units that are in an acceptable location are required to be ceiling fan rated. Now, what acceptable location means to you and the inspector is going to be up in the air. But I tell you, a lot of us like to put the LED disc lights that are not cans, but kind of look like cans. And when you install those, you use a regular outlet box. Well, if I put 10 of those in a basement, the way this code states, depending on where they're located on the wall, you're going to be required to have every one of those be a ceiling fan box. Whew. We'll have to see how this one flushes out in the 2023, but in the 2020, it's code number three. Number two. And this one really blew my mind because I don't see how it works out in the field, but if it's in the code, there must be some reason. No more than 18 inches of NM cable can be looped or bent before the first staple. Now, they haven't changed the distance. It's still four and a half feet, and they haven't changed the distance from the box. It's still 12 inches, but there must have been a problem you know, somewhere where they're looping the wire before or they're bending it around the corner. I don't know, and they're, you know, it's becoming a problem for the drywallers maybe having to push it out of the way. I don't know. But but you're not allowed to do more than 18 inches of NM cable looped or bent before you hit the first staple. Number two. Number one. Love them or hate them, tamper-resistant receptacles are here to stay. And now in the 2020, they've expanded their locations even more. Now you're required to do it in outdoor accessory buildings and detached uh, garages, among other places. If you do commercial work, you have to check the 2017 and the 2020. They have expanded the required locations for tamper resistance everywhere. Make sure that you're checking that so when you're doing service work and other installations that you're making sure that you bring that area up to code because we are the ones liable. So like I said, love them or hate them, tamper-resistant receptacles are here to stay. This is number one. 
Thank you for joining us for the top 10 changes in the 2020 National Electrical Codebook that will blow your mind. Thanks again to Williams Electric Supply for donating the codebook so we could make this series. You can give them a call at 423-926-1119 or visit them at 2824 West Market Street, Johnson City, Tennessee. Thanks again, Williams Electric. You are a superior provider in our area and we are very thankful for all that you do.